You have just downloaded the Barbecue Central show, which airs live every Tuesday from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central show is brought to you by the Barbecue Guru, creators of automatic pit temperature control technology. They can be found at the BBQ guru.com or call them 800-288-GURU and by the CHOPS Power Injector System the 2015 Barbecue Tool of the Year at the NBBQA find them at barbecuekansascity.com and by Butcher Barbecue from injections to rubs to sauces always trust your butcher at butcherbbq.com And by Big Papa Smokers, your one-stop online shop for everything and anything that has to do with barbecue. Their website is BigPapaSmokers.com. And by Cook Shack Pellet and Electric Grills. Visit them at PelletCooker.com or CookShack.com or call them 800-423-0698. And by Cook and Pellets. You can buy Cookin' Pellets at cookinpellets.com. You can also visit amazon.com to purchase as well. And by Green Mountain Grills, some of the best pellet grills on the market today. You can visit them at greenmountaingrills.com. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the really big Barbecue Central show. Uh, This is the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling, broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here for your Tuesday night fun and frivolity live fire and cooking show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. If you want to jump in on the show tonight, more than happy to have you. 216-220-0966. The phone number, the email address, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. Everything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening on the show. First and foremost, I've talked about it for weeks and weeks. The studio is set up. I can... Uh, not only talk as loud as I want, have the on-air sign, all of this other stuff, but the studio is also ripe for guests. And wouldn't you know it, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you got tipped to it around 1600 this afternoon. Joining me is my first in-studio guest, a guy who literally lives right next door to me. Welcome back to the show. Neighbor Desmond. Desmond, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, Greg. Thanks for having me. Well, you can't see how great we look together on this side of the screen because I have green screen enabled. We have monitors behind. I mean, we're we're sitting right next to each other. If you look to your right and I look to my right, we're looking right at each other, but we're not looking right. That's Desmond right there. So uh, what's up? Nothing much, man. I'm glad to be here. What, uh, What drew you back? Just to say you're like you 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 broke me out of a no guest streak in the <laughs> new studio. No, you cooked the other day. Yeah. You know why? To entice me to come over. It's fifty degrees <laughs> outside. <laughs> Let me tell you something. For the last two winners in a row, it's been some of the worst winter that yeah. we've had in recent like I can't even remember the last time it's been so bad. However, having 50 degrees in December and then it's rolled over all the way here to the end of January, beginning of February. It's February 2nd. It was 50 degrees today. It was plus 50 yesterday. Over the weekend was spectacular. If this is El Nino, bring it on. I want more El Nino. I've got my car washed like every other day because of those weather. And for the people that have no idea about why that's a big deal, because you probably live in climates that are warm and toasty most of the year, this is the time of year where you would never consider washing your car. Absolutely not. Unless you have 
guaranteed days of clear, dry road so you can take the car through the car wash and not blow 15 or 20 bucks or however much you spend for a car. What do, what do you spend for a car wash these days? Um, well, it depends. It depends on where you go. Every, every place is different, and it depends on the services that you want. Usually, I spend about 6 to 10 bucks, and I get... Like you get it at, Great the, at the you get it at the gas station or like do you go to a car no it's wash a, place? I go to a car wash place and it's actually a car wash place right here um, on Euclid I can't remember the name of it but they're actually doing like the five dollar place with the vacuums in the front yeah dude that's my place right there you know what you know they're offering a um, twenty dollar uh, membership and you get like sixty washes for a month what yeah it's only one car though so one car twenty bucks and you get up to sixty washes in a month. Twice a day, if you would like to. Really? Yes. And is that the uh, the five dollar yes like free thing or the five dollar like low wash car? Yeah. Or, okay. mm-hmm. That's not the worst. Yeah. Wait, are we talking about the same place? Yeah, it's right next to uh, the, the go Papa up to John's the top, and get, Papa Joe's. Go past yeah. that. And, well, it's the only car wash on the right on across the, from the, the uh, drive thru Yeah. Yeah. Their washes are six bucks. They went up inflation. Um. <laughs> yeah, they went up, but it's a great deal. But, to, but you get like the all inclusive for the twenty dollars. So you get like the best. You get the ham. You know the hand drying. Yeah, you can't beat that. Twenty bucks for a month. I was pretty skeptical because you know it is January, February in yeah. Cleveland, Ohio. That's the way where, to make money. If if it's if it's been like the last two years, you pay that money, and you know you're not getting your car washed. Right. Well, you know they invested a lot of money into this car wash, so yeah, it's, I, uh, it's I like the free off. vacuums. It brings me in for the free vacuums. Well, you know, with my two little mongrels, dude, I always got something to vacuum up. You, so I got I got three older ones playing a sports, tracking in mud and dirt and yeah. leaves, and who knows what other kind of tomfoolery and debauchery is coming in with those kids. Yeah. True. Yeah. You're, all your kids are athletes. My kids aren't at that stage yet. No, you have very young children. For those that don't know, uh, since the last time Desmond has been on, he is now a fiance. Wow, look at you. Ladies, I am off the market. Yeah. Welcome to hell, pal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, on top of that, he's got, how old is uh, Braden? Braden's Two and three. three. He'll be he'll be four in May, but he's the size of a seven-year-old. No, he's very, he's very, uh, he's very big for his age. He's tall. Then he's got a sister that's not one yet. No, Leah. Leah is uh, eight months. She'll be. She'll be a year or six days yeah. after Braden will wow. be four. So in May. Coming up. So. Coming up. Yeah. The time flies. Yes, it does. So are you? Are you still like cooking or what outside? Yeah. You know me. Like I'm. I'm oh, all about. It. Shit, I know you're about it. That's yeah. why I come over here. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's <laughs> easier to just come over and eat. You know what? That's how you entice people. You know, for my job, I go out and I entice people with cookies and candy and all this other. You want my attention? It's usually a dollar sign of barbecue. So Yeah, I like it. So do you have any expectations about what's actually going to be happening? on the? Wait, hold on. I've done a disservice to our listeners. Here's what's happening on the show tonight. By the way, uh, Desmond Motley is in tonight. You can follow him on the Twitter at uh, Des Motley. D- Des, I thought it was D D Boy. Oh, that's, wait, is that that's Instagram. Instagram. Oh. That's Instagram. Uh, what the hell is my Twitter handle? I don't know. I know one, mine. It's all one, the same. I think it's one Des Motley. One Des Motley. Mm-hmm. So follow him on I the Twitter. That's what it is. And uh, D D is it D D Boy like, thirty three like Delta Boy. Yeah. Yeah. D not just not D E E. No, just D. D. Yeah, the letter D. Letter D. All right, so Absolutely. look him up on the social media. He's worth the file. Plus, every once in a while, he gets incredibly insane on the Facebooks, calling uh, Steph Curry certain words that we could never use on this show. You sure about that? I mean, I think so. All right. I, I don't want to disrespect <laughs> airwaves. Hey, I don't right. want the, I don't the, the non FCC regulated airwaves. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Forget it. All right. So, uh, Des is sitting in for the entirety of the show. At six minutes from now, first Tuesday of the month, guests have a barbecue ill, feeling a little shameful about a barbecue ailment that you might have. Well, lucky for you, we have a visit by the good doctor, 
Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, is in 914. He's a Hall of Famer, by the way, Des. I'm sure you knew that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, of course you did. You know, and, Travel Channel, I watch. Yeah. I watch nine, the competitions. 935, uh, the team, one of the teams, one of the three teams that I am following all season. He competed in the Sunny's Invitational in Sanford, Florida this past weekend. It is none other than the pit master of Mama and Papa Joe's Barbecue. Clarence Joseph will be joining us. And then we will launch into the second hour where a longtime sponsor of this show and a championship barbecue pit master will be joining us for at least one segment. He is the 2015 Team of the Year winner in the pork category. From my live reads, you would also know that he has cornered the market on what most competitive barbecue cooks have begun to aim for when it comes to flavor profiles on the competition scene. Uh, 50% of the West Coast offense, I am, of course, talking about none other than Sterling Ball from Big Pop Smith. Yes, Sterling is it. All right. Sterling, you know, he's a minutia guy, but then within the next breath, he is ultimate big picture guy. So, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. So what we're going to potentially be covering with Sterling are going to be some insight on the pork, and we probably won't go like full in-depth roundtable type of thing because there are some other items that he's got going on. He puts on barbecue contests as well, the guinea pig, the king of the smoker. Guinea pig's coming up here, so we're going to be talking a lot about that. We'll probably just talk, uh, if you've ever had any questions about competition barbecue in general, Desmond. This is going to be the guy that's going to give you both barrels right between the eye. Unadulterated honesty as only Sterling Ball can bring it to you. So think of any questions that you might have. If you think that someday we're going to be forming a team together, no, we're never going to do that. But if you're thinking about it, this is the guy that we can get some really good insight. Hey, the only way we're going to form a team is if we come into a lot of money and I need something to do yeah i mean we could we could easily pass the time with a lot of money not competing barbecue i guarantee that and it would involve think, a lot I of eating if, and drinking i think i uh, well <laughs> drinking of course but of course. i think if i got rich i just compete just to compete yeah just because you got f you money pretty much All right here's something else that we're going to be talking about we are talking about big papa smokers the one-stop online shop for anyone interested in barbecue. Of course, the number one dealer of Mac Pellet Grills in the world. Big Pop has also made a name for itself in recent years by crafting those award-winning line of championship rubs. From flavors like Sweet Money to Happy Ending, these rubs have had a hand in winning almost every major barbecue competition cooking event in the history of events at this point. And don't think they can just be pigeonholed in competitive barbecue either. BPS rubs have become so well-known that they've been picked up by nationwide restaurant chain BJ's Restaurant and Brew House. With four of the nine BPS rub featured on the permanent menu, amid the glowing reviews, the Big Papa rubs have been proven addition to anyone's pantry. Now, they've also get banded together with fellow California-based rub company Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form what has now become known as the West Coast Offense. They've divided conventional wisdom these two California-based rub makers have cornered the market on competitive barbecue and begun to redefine the flavor profile that competitive cooks from across the country have begun to aim for. They also have the online meat locker with top-quality meats from Snake River Farms shipped right to your door. American Kobe beef, the Kurabuda pork, the Double R Ranch meats. Big Papa's meat locker has something for every type of barbecue aficionado. Committed to bringing you the best flavors on the market, the new sauces, of course. Uh, for instance, last year was Swamp Boy sauce, Granny's barbecue sauce, things of this nature. Big Papa's also has the brand ambassador program called the BPS Elite Team, featuring 15 of the best competition teams in the country working together to promote camaraderie, competition barbecue, and to benefit children's charities across the U.S. Keep in mind, They've been doing this with only five years of being in the business, turning competition barbecue on its head, providing customers with the very best barbecue products, becoming a staple of a nationwide restaurant chain, and most importantly, benefiting children's charities across the U.S. Just the beginning for Big Papa Smokers, and we will have Sterling Ball on a little bit later in this show in the second hour. So stay tuned for that. BigPapaSmokers.com. That's BigPapaSmokers.com. We're back with Ray Lampy right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. This portion of the Barbecue Central show is being brought to you by Green Mountain Grills, manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. If you are looking for a big cooker to house a lot of food, they got one for you. How about some medium size? Got your cover there, too. Something to take on tailgates? Sure. Got your cover there as well. They can also supply you with pellets to fire those cookers. All you have to do is visit GreenMountainGrills.com. That's Green mountaingrills.com. I love my Green Mountain Grill. Desmond, you can attest to that. Yes. I love my Green Mountain. You could love yours, too, if you just visit the website and hook it up. All right. Without any further ado, my first Tuesday of the month guest is uh, someone that you are very well versed in knowing, multiple time author, a cooking class instructor, a TV judge, TV contestant. I mean, this guy's everywhere that is anywhere when it comes to uh, barbecue. So we will race to the hotline and welcome in friend of the show, Ray Lampy, who appears to be on location tonight. Ray, how are you, buddy? I'm good. good. Greg, how about you? Yeah, not my office today. Yeah, absolutely uh, fantastic. Always appreciate the time. Uh, Ray, I have my first in-studio guest this evening. Uh, say hello to my neighbor, Desmond. Hey, Desmond. Good to meet you. Good good to meet you as well. Uh, Ray, Desmond is a big fan. He did uh, name a number of TV stations that he has seen you on, so he's not just saying that you know, to, to suck your ass. This guy knows his barbecue game. So, I mean, he lives next to me, for crying out loud. He's got to, Whether he wants to be versed in it or not, that's what I'm going to be bending his ear about. Okay. A lot of guys look like me, though, so he might have mistaken me for someone else. Yeah, of course. Um, it Ray, happens. Ray Lampy joining me here <laughs> on the show. Uh, Ray, let me ask you a couple quick questions here before we get into uh, some of the other Ask Dr. Barbecue questions. Uh, I think the time before last, we were talking about book writing and the process that you go through. And one of the things that you had mentioned was the fact that you were in the process of either finishing or working on the Big Green Egg book. And with all of the time that you have had together with Big Green Egg, come to find out there was actually no Big Green Egg book that was on the market to this point. Well, no, there was. They did one about, oh, maybe five or six years ago. They did one with, uh, uh, it's very formal. It's a big, thick, almost a coffee table looking book really tells the story of Big Green Egg and, and not something I would have wanted to do anyway. So, I, I mean, I was fine. Um, it, it, it's not it, a lot of the recipes are not what I, I think the eggheads want. Um, so, you know, they did one that it was the right way to do it the first time, but they've been looking to do something different. So, so it be a cookbook. How, how does uh, and now how, there's a bunch of knockoff ones that, you know, are not authorized, but um but whatever uh, so in this particular book as you said the you know the one that was before that was authorized not necessarily something that you felt the eggheads were looking at how do you feel this one differentiates itself well yeah i mean you know that i wrote it the way i think it's more i think it's just creative and interesting recipes they're going to want um you know the, i didn't try to take uh a bunch of formal recipes and convert them to the egg. I've been cooking on the egg for 12 years. I know what people like to cook on the egg uh, and I know what it's capable of. So I think people are really going to like the variety of recipes. You know, I really tried to uh, um, spread it out and make a, a really interesting. I mean, I don't think people know how to need to know how to light charcoal. Yeah. There's a little bit of that in there, but I don't, there's no point in writing a big book about how to lay the, the convector thing in there and put the grate back on. You know, once you've cooked on the egg for a couple of weeks, you know how to do that. I, you know, so I, I really, for me, it was all about the recipes, making good creative recipes. Because a lot of these guys, you know, they buy their egg and ladies, they buy their egg and they really become better cooks because they, they get into it. They get into inventoring and it goes that way with a lot of grills. You know, a guy buys a nice piece of equipment, he wants to learn how to use it, but they don't necessarily have the creativity or the ability to know which six ingredients that are in the cabinet go together and make something interesting. So Hopefully, that's what I really brought to him. Since it's not the first book you've ever written and it's not the first recipe book that you've ever written, how do you do you have a catalog of stuff that you can kind of go back and cross reference to make sure you're not 
kind of regenerating another recipe that one that you hadn't used in a couple of years or four years or five years and go, man, this seems like it would be really good or whatever. And then you're like, oh yeah, I already did this one already. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I don't do that. I mean, I, yeah, I'm always aware of that for sure. And that's the challenge. But as you, you know, like with this book, uh, I, about a year ago, I was thinking, well, what, what are my weak points? You know, as, as a recipe writer, what do I stay away from? We all, it's like if you go to make a rub in your kitchen without thinking about it, you make almost the same rub every time because those are the things you like. And and it's the same way for a cookbook author. So you have to push yourself sometimes. Uh, it's funny, Sandy will will eat something that I made and she's like, well, this is OK, but it's nothing, you know, that I would. Why would you make this? And I said, well, it's not I can't make the same thing every day. You know, I have to make different things. And some people it's amazing the the feedback I get from recipes that I didn't think were all that exciting. You know, I mean, I think that one was okay. It wasn't my favorite, um, but you have to make a nice broad spectrum of recipes. And it's it's interesting. So it, uh, it's tendencies probably more than specific recipes. But like, for instance, this time, I, I don't use a lot of fresh herbs. I never really have in my cooking because it used to be a hassle to find them. Now they're in the store um, and, and you don't keep them around the house. When you're writing a cookbook, you're cooking every day. So you don't mind buying them herbs and having them around the house. So I really made an effort to use more fresh herbs in this cookbook. And I think it made for good food, better food, and it made me a better recipe developer. Ray Lampy joining me here on the show. Ask Dr. Barbecue is the name of this segment. If you have a question you'd like us to uh, throw around here in the upcoming shows, askdrbbq.com gets you to where you want to go. Otherwise, you can visit Ray's website, DRBBQ. Dot com. Ray, in, in regards to your favorite recipes, do you ever see a time, maybe it's the last book effort before you, you hang up the pen and decide it's not worth it anymore or, or whatever the case may be, where you just make Ray's favorite recipe book? I do that all the time. I I really do. At home, I'm, I, I cook much simpler. If I'm just going to cook myself something, I cook much simpler than I do for the recipes. Uh, if I'm cooking a steak, I grab the Lowry's and put a little Lowry seasoned salt on it, and I grill it, and I eat it. Um, I just don't care to make a steak sauce or or a pureed cauliflower to go under it or a salsa to go with it or that kind of thing or develop some exotic rub. I just put a little Lowry's on it and cook it. So, um, but but as far as my my personal favorite things no that's what you leave you leave it all on the table man it was like writing the first cookbook was interesting because i was still pretty active competition wise and and i included a lot of that but also it's you know your your chicken soup recipe that i had been making my grandma taught me how to make is in the nfl cookbook and so it's like a come to jesus meeting with yourself if you're going to take the money for doing this you got to let it go you got to just you know accept that this is where these recipes go. You don't hold any back for yourself. I don't. Anyway, I, I can't imagine anyone does. It's, it's just part of the process. It, it's, it's, you know, you get paid for it for one, but it's also a sharing thing that you, you get comfortable with that. Right. In regards to the Big Green Egg Cookbook, does is, is that have a tentative launch date or a firm launch date at this point? Yeah, it'll be uh, for Eggtoberfest in the fall. So will you be bringing like a truckload of books to Oktoberfest and you're going to be like signing and taking pictures with everybody who wants to go ahead and buy them? Uh, I won't be bringing the truck there, but hopefully <laughs> someone will. <laughs> and yes, I'll be taking a lot of pictures and uh, and hopefully signing a lot of books. Yeah, it, it, it should be a big deal. You know, I mean, Big Renee has such a good following and, and we know the numbers from the previous book and, and it's got a lot of potential. Uh, Ray, we, we look at competitions and i know we've had conversations back and forth on you know if we feel the competition barbecue is seen in apex or, or seen its popularity and you're starting to to trend on the downside and then you have things that happen like this past weekend with sunny's invitational taking place kind of a i don't know if you would call it the first major competition of the year but it's a first year competition it's in florida it's also competing with a big kcbs event of course the the long endured uh, lakeland pig festival and you know i think between the the two events themselves there was well over 100 teams combined so uh, are you encouraged to see a sunny's invitational uh, go in or what's your what's your thought on that competition and i know it's a little loaded because it's a first year contest and you never know how things are going to kind of pan out for the long term but you know did you hear any buzz about it um well, yeah i, I talked to him a lot the people from sunny's and some of the people who were putting it together as it was 
being put together. Uh, I, I think it's great. I, I think it's outstanding that Sonny's is, is stepping to the plate. Think about that. Think about where we are compared to five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It's amazing that Sonny's is coming back to the barbecue world. You know, Sonny's, Sonny's has been a successful restaurant for a long time, but they didn't really know us or care about us. And all of a sudden they want to be part of that. Um, so I think it's outstanding. I, I was disappointed that it ended up on the date of the Pig Fest. I'm a big fan of Lakeland Pig Fest. This was their 20th year, and I've been going for 19 of them. And I moved to Lakeland because I used to go down there for Pig, Pig Fest. So I was disappointed that that happened. I'm also a founding member of the Florida Barbecue Association. And frankly, I'll say it right out. Somebody steered those people to that date, and I don't think it was an accident. And, and I, fl I flat out told the Sunnies people that. Um, and that's my personal opinion, but I feel that way and I don't like it. But however, there was over a hundred people at the Lakeland cook-off. And so, uh, they have a huge backyard contest there. You wouldn't know the difference between the backyard and the, in the, but it's for the locals. All the locals there wanted to have in the backyard and it's grown just like the KCBS cook-off has. It was interesting. I, I went over there Friday and walked around to Lakeland and said, I, I, I couldn't make it over to Sunny's. I would have loved to go over there. It's just the other side of the state and I didn't have time. Um, I, at the pig fest, it was very different compared to the old days. I was walking through with a chef that I recently befriended and I was showing him around. And I said, now this is the space I used to always set up for years. I set up right in that spot. And now there's a, a popcorn vendor or something there. And they've moved out into the parking lot where all the teams are because it just got so big. They couldn't contain it in the, the area where it was. Um, and, and I, I, I hardly know any of the teams. It's really funny. Um, I used to know everybody there, but I'm just not that involved anymore. But so, you know, we talk about the apex of bar competition barbecue. Hell no, we're not even close. I mean, there's just new guys all the time. And I'm walking through there and, and these are new guys that I don't know, but they sure don't look like they just showed up. You know, they got beautiful equipment. They all know what they're doing. Um, it's amazing to see what's happening. And then I don't know how many teams were at the Sunnies thing, but they had a good turnout too. So you're talking probably close to 200 teams cooking in, in January. Uh, it hurts me uh, I'm, because Lakeland, I saw, I ran into John Nilgis, um, Parrot Head from up in North Dakota, yep. and, and one of the few old school guys there that I knew, and we were talking about it. And it's not that long ago, there was a dozen or so big contests around the country that we all went to. No matter where you were from, you went to those. And Lakeland was one of them. And, and, you know, it was January in Florida, too. And, you know, unfortunately, there's just so many contests and so many good ones and so many high dollar ones now that Lakeland was, is a perfect example of one that kind of has lost some of the luster. On the other hand, there was over 100 teams there. And I saw Rub posting about he sold more barbecue than he ever has. And he's been going for a lot of years. So it's hard to look at anything but highly successful. Uh, Ray, do you think that if, if we haven't hit the apex yet that all we're going to be doing at this point is running new competitions against ones that are established and cooks are just going to have to go ahead and, and pick and choose and if some fall by the wayside for whatever reason, that's just the evolution of competition barbecue at this point? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think the survival of the fittest is just the way it's gonna, it is. It's too bad, but, but I, I'm not one for saying, no, you can't have these new uh, – Oh, better is, is maybe not the right word, but better contest. If it's going to hurt an old contest, I'm sorry. That's the way the world goes around. Um, at some level, it is business, you know, for all these people. And and even if it's not for the competitors, it is for the people that are putting on the events. They're trying to raise money for a charity or something. So I, I, I don't, I, as much as I feel bad about that, I, it's just the way it goes. But like the Lakeland guys. So it may not be the fancy, famous contest from everybody for everybody from around the country anymore, but they've developed so many local enthusiasts to cook and judge and, and come and buy the barbecue and come to the event that it, it goes on very well anyway. And that's what happens with the good ones. Um, in my, I hope I was so encouraged by the Sam's club thing and, and it still goes strong, but, it, but it's sort of slid back into the line almost of just being more like a, a traditional contest. I was hopeful that we'd see more of that kind of stuff and, and, and I still am. I, you know, I, I think what we'll ultimately see is multiple circuits. Um, this one will always continue on. The KCBS one will always continue on. 
But I, I, I think that we'll see some hybrid circuits. Every time someone calls me about this, and I have these conversations regularly, I suggest that it's going to have to be, if we're going to do something with big sponsorship and, and proper marketing, it will have to be invitational type thing. We're going to pick the teams because we, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't sit in your RV all weekend and expect us to get you a sponsor. If you're not, if that's all you want to do, you're not going to fit in, in my dream high profile event tour. You know, what we're going to find is 20 guys that really do want to get it and are willing to talk to the public and cook a little barbecue and do a catering or vend or whatever that may be. I don't know. I mean, we'll see how it goes, but I think we'll see spinoff circuits. Um, to look a little different. What kind of a time frame do you do you prognosticate on that? Because I thought we honestly, I thought at this point when we were talking, you know, three, four, five years ago, that we might have three or four different factions, or we might have a uh, a super pro circuit where it was really only a small handful of teams that were getting sponsored that were traveling a condensed season for all this big prize money, and by all accounts, not anywhere near coming to fruition. So I'm just kind of, you know, wondering yeah. from your perspective, you know, how do you see that in a time frame? Yeah, I, I'm with you. I thought it would have happened by now, too. I guess I thought it was going to happen 20 years ago and 10 years ago <laughs> and five years ago and two years ago. I guess I'm, you know, ever the optimist about it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, there's certainly there's always discussions and I would bet you there are some going on right now that I'm not privy to about something with it. Um, I mean, one of the problems, and I don't know what the solution is, though, and I, I said it earlier, you go to the cook-off and a lot of guys, they just want to sit in their RV with their cooker outside and they don't prep any meat in sight of anyone. And, and <clears throat> you know, I, that doesn't make for a very entertaining situation. Now, somehow these cook-offs manage to uh, sell this as, a, as the people will come and look at it. And people like to meet the guys and everything. But, and this is a horrible thing to say, but let's... Tell me who the rock stars are that have come out of the barbecue contest world in the last five years. Who are the new guys? You know, I I, I just don't see them. I think they're they're they they want to do they want to be content with with going to the cook off and being left alone. Well, <laughs> okay, I was never content with that. I always understood that if you know if I went and and rubbed some elbows and maybe did something a little different and was willing to put in a little extra effort meeting people, that might work into a business for me. Um, I don't understand that cooking. A brisket, the best brisket all week is going to make you uh, take you to the next level. You know, good for you. You may win a trophy and a few bucks, but out there in the real world of marketing, nobody cares that much. We've all got, I mean, let's be honest, we've all got garages full of trophies because they give you, they give them all the way down to 10 plays. They'll they give 40 or 50 trophies away at every cook off, and there's 300 cook offs for the last 10 years. <laughs> you do the math. So winning 20 trophies is not a big accomplishment. Ray Lampy joining me here on the show, Dr. Barbecue. You can visit his website, drbbq.com, and you can submit a question. Ask drbbq.com for a future show. Uh, are you are you doing the uh, National Barbecue Association thing? I am, yeah. I, I've really been trying to help them. Linda Orison, I ran into her at, uh, at a wedding, and at Ken Hess's wedding a couple years ago, and she was the incoming president. She twisted my arm a little bit to help her out. And uh, Chris Lilly was standing at the next table, so I immediately suckered him into it, too. Um, so we, we both have been helping, and, I, and Myron has as well. Uh, I know Tuffy's coming this year. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to see a strong National Barbecue Association. We've all been members off and on over the years and didn't work out, and it never has, was finding a good identity. Linda, uh, you know, it's funny how women can do that sometimes. They leave the ego at the door, and uh, we, we're not that good at it. And um, she's really got it going in the right direction right now. So, yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm going to host the Meet the Masters again. I can tell you a couple of the guests. Uh, we're trying to get all new guests. Last year we had uh, Myron, Chris Lilly, Leanne, Paul Kirk, Brad Orison, and who is the sixth one? I forget. Uh, I apologize to whoever that was. This year so far i got Melissa Cookston is coming Ooh. and Tuffy and Famous Dave. And there's wow. three more coming, but I'm not going to tell you who yet. But it's going to be, yeah, it's pretty cool. We would change it up. They used to do it. Uh, they had a room, and every every one of the masters would sit at his own table, and you would rotate, you know, every 20 minutes or so. But it, it got a little stale because it was the same people. Oh, Mike Mills was with us last year, and uh, it was the same. It was the same people just sitting there every every year. It wasn't that interesting? So I was like, well, let's put them on stage, and 
Yeah. And so we did with the six, those six last year, and it was great. And Linda is like, well, there's a lot of good people out there. I was like, well, that's a good idea. We'll try not to recycle the same people. Oh, you know, in a couple of years, we'll probably uh, get some of them back. But I think there's a lot of cool people. So if we can, you know, use six new people every year. And it was fun. We sat up there for an hour and a half and, and really had a good time. And I suspect it'll be fun this year, too. Ray Lampy will be hosting Meet the Masters at the National Barbecue Association's conference. This is going to be in Jacksonville, Florida this year. And you can find Are you him. coming? Me? Yeah, come Hell on. Hell no! <laughs> uh, I'm no I was going to you on to Meet the Masters, but since you're not coming. Oh, yeah. Uh, how how convenient. All right. Maybe I will then, and then you got to put me on stage, and you know damn well you're going to be late. shitting your pants. Too late. I already changed my mind. All right. Uh, maybe next year then. Uh, you can find Ray here on this show, by the way, the first Tuesday of each month, and we always appreciate the time. Thanks so much for coming on, Ray. We'll talk to you again next month. Good to talk to you, Greg. Take All care. Right. There he is, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue. Joining us here on this show. What do you think about Ray? Desmond. You know, I... He's sleeping, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no, I I, I I, get what he was saying about, uh, you know, his with his book, you know, about doing simple things at home and trying to do, you know, do outlandish things for, you know... People are, people are buying the outlandish things. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but when it comes to him, the nuances of of, of simple things, I do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, you've had some of my cooking before, so. The best stuff is the simple stuff. It's the simple thing, right. you know. I, for instance, uh, you know, pork ribs, throw some uh, curry powder on them, yeah. you know, whatever. Change it up. Just Get change it, it up. But you know what? You do it for you. Yeah. And, you know, but he's marketing and doing it for other people. You know, it's different. You saw this this weekend because you were like, what the hell is that? It was the Chops Power Injector System, the thing with the Oh, I product. love it. Are you kidding me? It's the, uh, speaking of the National Barbecue Association, this was the barbecue tool of the year last year at that uh, particular convention. Really? It's patent pending. It's not featuring one, not two, but four needles evenly spaced. You saw them yourself. Mm-hmm. Let me break it down for the folks that aren't familiar. The number one seller is the one that you saw, Desmond. It's the half-gallon Chops Power Injector System, designed for the competition guy or to pump up the backyard guy like me and you. Easy to use. Clean it, fill it, pump it, and you're off and running. If you have one brisket or a pork shoulder to do, you don't need to fill it all the way up. I've never filled it all the way up, by the way. Really? You just put in what you need, and it uses it all. It comes with 14-gauge needles two replacement plastic needle adapters, three plug screws, and a needle protector. It's 100 bucks plus shipping anywhere. Then you have the one-gallon Chops Power Injector System. This one's designed more for the catering guys, the bigger jobs. Holds double the amount of the half-gallon, obviously. That's why they call it the gallon. Some use it in competitions like when you're cooking MBN whole hog or maybe you're doing 10 shoulders to get that perfect one. It comes with 14-gauge needles, two replacement needle adapters, three plug screws, and a needle protector. This one's 20, 120 bucks for shipping anywhere. Then you have the crazy big one, the newest one, the CHOPS Full Power Injector System. It's electric. It's the commercial and competition Big Daddy. It doesn't have a holding tank like the other two. No, this one has a three-and-a-half-foot pickup tube that you can put in any size container, from a few ounces to a 55-gallon drum. It was originally designed for Chef Rob at one of the best barbecue restaurants in Kansas City, and he has said time and time again, that with the Chops Full Power Injector System, his briskets are better than ever. It comes with metal needle adapters, 14-gauge needles, 3-inch 12-gauge needles, 2-inch 11.5-gauge needles, 3 plug screws, and a needle protector, $325 bucks plus shipping anywhere. A number of the top pit masters in the world are using this system. Here's the thing you can attest. We live in a foodie world. We now live in a position where flavor is required in every single bite. This is how you're going to do it and you can do it really fast. And it's not just for me. Attention alcoholics. You can infuse liquor into your fruit with the Chopped Power Injector System. It's just that easy. Every injector hand assembled right there in Kansas City, Missouri, USA. They got all the accessories if you want them. Here's what you do. You visit BarbecueKansasCity.com. That's B-A-R-B-E-Q-U-E BarbecueKansasCity.com and then decide what size you want. You're going to be happy, and you're going to wonder how the hell you ever got by with a single needle. Absolutely ludicrous. Get the Chops Power Injector System. Thank me later. Clarence Joseph, out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Get in the smoke. Call 86. 
877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back to 16220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Desmond Motley's sitting right there. To my well, to my left, but if you're watching the television, to your right. And it looks like we're sitting right next to each other. That's the best thing ever. Love it. Thanks for coming over, Desmond. I appreciate the invite. It. All right. All right. We got this whole green screen thing worked out. All right. Uh, this portion of the show is being brought to you by cookingpellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all of your pellet driven cookers. Visit cookingpellets.com for more information or purchase. Or if you like amazon.com, you can. Run over there, search for cooking pellets, and buy from there as well. Plus, sometimes they have outrageous deals on shipping. Everybody loves to save money on shipping, so uh, you know, check them out as well. Cookingpellets.com. Appreciate their support as well. All right, uh, this guy is uh, making, I believe, his third appearance. Well, maybe second, third appearance, like in the last uh, month and change. But he's one of the teams that is being followed the whole competition season of 2016. And uh, this is a Texas-based team, and he took his talents kind of towards South Beach, not to use a lame Cavaliers heartbreaking quote from back in the day. However, I mean, look at Desmond. My man Desmond is all decked out in Cleveland Cavaliers outfit. Always. Uh, we race over the hotline and welcome back friend of the show, pitmaster of Mom and Papa Joe's Barbecue, Clarence Joseph. Clarence, how are you, buddy? Just fine, Greg. How are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Clarence. Uh, I have my uh, next-door neighbor, Desmond Motley, joining us here as well. D, what's happening, baby? How you doing? What's going on? What you know good there, Clarence? Man, I'm trying to get like you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, not everybody can uh, be held captive here in my basement. (laughs) That's how we roll down here in Cleveland. Uh, Clarence, big uh, big weekend transpires for you. Of course, you uh, leave the confines of Texas, as we talked about a couple weeks ago. And uh, the last we left, you were a little kind of like on the edge with the chicken flavor and and how you were going to be tweaking that to get down to Florida. So uh, you know, let's kind of start from there and, and build it. Uh, great, great trip to Florida. Uh, wet the entire way, but uh, we made it in and uh, got set up uh, real quick and began to enjoy the weekend. You know, chicken, uh, one of those things, uh, again, Greg, uh, I talk so much about how good food travels. And, you know, uh, the- damn, lost him. What the hell? He go. Stuff out of here. Bring them back. I was interested. I know. I Believe me, you were interested. Hold <laughs> on. Skype has stopped working. What? Oh, no. Technical difficulties abound. You know, oh, I just, boy, no. I just, had, um, I just had the AT&T guy out here to make sure that I was having issues with my worldwide internet. Yeah. And I thought that was... Maybe I just overloaded the computer for a second. Who knows? Who knows? I tell you all the time. I tell you all the time. You got to get the Time Warner. Oh, right. I have Wait, no I gotta get, issues. I got to get with Time Warner? Yes. No. I have no issues whatsoever. No. I, we can talk off air about why we, that's a bad decision. Well, okay. We we can do that. Don't, and don't bring up how I dropped Clarence, by the way. <laughs> that's one thing. You got That's one thing. Give me a break. Uh, Clarence. All right, baby. Uh, I think we're back. Seemed like we dropped the call a minute ago. Are are, are you upside down? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that happened. Wow, look at that! <laughs> You're dancing on the ceiling, man. Love it. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that happened. Yeah, I have no idea. I can't fix that on my end. Well, that's that's crazy. Flip, flip. There you go. Hey, look at that guy. Well, uh, here we go. Nice T-shirt. No, oh, but like I was saying, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that good food travels. Yeah. But uh, each of these uh, three times that I've been outside of Texas, uh, KCBS and uh, now FBA for the first time, for whatever reason, I have chosen to go away from what I'm comfortable with 
and trying to do what those guys are doing. And I think this is probably my last uh, attempt at that. Uh, and I, I'm saying that now, but for some reason, I feel like I've got to do what they're doing in order to compete with them. So, uh, but I absolutely don't think uh, it is necessary uh, after three three attempts. Claire, Claire. Went in there with my chicken and uh, tried uh, some new rubs, some rubs that I'm not very comfortable with, and one of them ended up being way too spicy. And, you know, uh, at turn-in, after I tasted it, I realized right then and there I made a huge error. But uh, the other three meats I, I absolutely love, and I thought they would do very well. It, it seems a bit counterproductive or, or counterintuitive when you hear pitmasters talk on this show. All they talk about is stick with the program. The program's good. It's consistency. It's consistency. And you're not a guy that's just kind of like fresh onto the competition scene, so you're trying to work a new angle this weekend and maybe work a new angle, you know, this – why do you feel like you needed to do what these other guys are doing if what you're doing was being well received? You know, we we hear of these uh, trained judges, uh, FBA, uh, uh, KCBS. We hear these, these these trained judges what to look, what they know what to look for. They know what they like, and uh, one of the, one of the rubs that you hear of, of so often that that they everybody seems to to use. Uh, in that in that uh, in that uh, body, that sanctioning body is like a blues hog. That is something I definitely don't use here in Texas. Yeah. But uh, I, each of the three times I've stepped outside of Texas, I've tried to use it. I'm not a fan of it. I think it's absolutely uh, vile to to to, to use uh, that word. I'm not a fan of blues. Wow, hog. that's a, that's almost like uh, blasphemous in barbecue circles. Oh my lord. Uh, uh, well. I, I shouldn't say vibe, but it's got a taste that I'm not very uh, fond of. Yeah. But I try to use it when I go uh, into uh, into into uh, you know uh, KCBS and uh, and now FBA. But uh, I have uh, and I'm, I will be getting the opportunity. But uh, the next time I do, I'm actually going to go with my uh, with my, my Texas uh, uh, flavor profiles and see what they do. Uh, again, I'm very happy with uh, the the overall cook uh, this weekend. You know, uh, we had a couple of uh, 12 place uh, ribs, uh, 12 place uh, uh, pork. Uh, so we just missed uh, uh, making it to the stage. Uh, overall, there were 47, 48 teams or whatever it is there in the pro series. So you come in 16th place. So, you know, a little bit better than middle of the pack. And I think given the overall competition of the field, and, you know, if I was a competition guy and I wasn't hearing my name called, I would always be freaking out that I was tanking and, you know, it could be a DAL situation. However, there is the other side of the coin where if you're not hearing your name called, you might be just outside. And there's been a lot of teams that have gotten maybe one call or no calls, but they're amassing points because they're just on the cusp there. And the other teams that are getting called, you know, that might be their best call of the day and they're kind of towards the bottom. So you never really know until the end. Uh, and that is one of the things I uh, I like about this scoring system. You know, you don't necessarily have to be walking top three in order to uh, compete for overall. And I, uh, I'm i not going to lie, when I left that award ceremony, I was dragging. Uh, my face had to be touching, touching the dirt because I felt that low. You know, uh, I actually uh, expected to get a, a walk or two and it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. So after I picked up that, uh, I picked up that final report, and walked back to the truck under a light pole <laughs> in the dark, and I flipped through the first couple of pages. Uh, Greg, I'm not gonna lie, my attitude did an absolute 180. I mean, uh, I I felt like uh, I was on a high all of a sudden, you know, from 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 the depths of the the, the mud. To uh, hey, flying a little high uh, with that 16th plate finish, uh, seeing where uh, that pork and that uh, and that rib finished, you know. So uh, yes, uh, I definitely uh, needed that that jolt of energy, and I got it with that final uh, that overall report. So going forward, just to confirm, you're you're going back to more of a, a Texas flavor profile, at least for the foreseeable future. 
Yes, I, I absolutely will. You know, I'll be using my uh, my Texas rubs, uh, my my uh, my Cimarron docks, my uh, my sucker busters, my uh, uh, th those things that are getting me going. My my Ritter's products, those things uh, that I've gone away from, those things that are helping me do well here in Texas that I've that I've stepped away from trying to chase. Uh, that proverbial KCBS tail, you know, uh, it maybe it, it's it's taken me three attempts to realize uh, I need to stick with what I do best. You know, like uh, the, the 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 phrase you often hear is uh, "dance with the girl." For some reason, I, I keep leaving her at home, uh, but uh, no more. I've learned my lesson. It took me three times. Uh, I've learned my lesson. Was your wife like, dude? Snap out of it. Let's get back to what we know. This was a long way to go to to learn that we want to stick with what we got. If it ain't you know, broke, don't I, fix I think it. I might have I might have convinced her uh, over over the months that we've got to try to do what they're doing. Uh, and uh, but she will agree with me that we need to stick to where we're comfort we uh, where we're comfortable. You know, stick to what we do best. We're talking with Clarence Joseph, Mama and Papa Joe's Barbecue Pitmaster, and uh, we're uh, recapping the Sunnies Invitational. Uh, overall, uh, for a, for a first year event, there was a lot of hype coming into this one. There was a lot of big teams from many different sanctioning bodies. Texas, by the way, well represented. Um, aside from uh, Mama and Papa Joe's 16th place finish, so uh, I think from a, a Texas standpoint, th that particular state has to be proud. But uh, Iowa's in there, Georgia's in there, Florida's in there. A lot of the uh, Mocan teams are in there. What did you think of the event itself? They uh, that that organization, that Sunny's organization, did an awesome job. Uh, you know, things could have really went south uh, with the weather conditions, uh, the grounds. Uh, you know, uh, Friday night we ran to Thursday night we ran to uh, Academy and and bought some white uh, rubber boots. Uh, we were uh, we were in in pretty close to ankle deep mud the entire weekend. So uh, overall, you know, uh, never been assigned uh, except at the Royal. Uh, uh, never been assigned a, an ambassador. Uh, very helpful. Uh, we had a gentleman, uh, Tony Snow, very helpful gentleman uh, uh, at our site very often, you know, trying to remind us of uh, the rules. That's uh, new new to uh, the cooks, new to uh, FBA, reminding us of the rules, reminding us what judges are looking for, seeing if we need uh, anything. So they really did a good job, very impressive job. Uh, they did what they could to repair the grounds, uh, you know, mulch, sand, anything they could add to try to dry things out. So, uh they really did a great job. And one of the things that impressed me most uh, about uh, these types of competition is the way they run their awards. You know, their awards are snap, 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 and you're out of there. Uh, you know, the, we don't, they don't have those, those hour and a half, two hour long award ceremonies. They're out of there. In Texas, we have some, some knockdown, drag out, <laughs> long awards. <laughs> You you gotta you gotta pass the word if they fly me down there, man. I'll knock awards out in about fifteen minutes. I know how to I know how to race through that shit. No bullshit. Let's get down there. Let's see who the winner is and let's get to drinking. Hey, uh, I've seen it firsthand. You know, we love that here. That's what it's all about. Yep. Uh, at the end of the day, cooks are tired. They want to get in and get out. Right. Uh, no need to drag it out. And uh, uh, they're very impressive in, in how quickly they can they can knock out four categories. Uh. Clarence, where are you guys going to be competing at next? This weekend, uh, Greg, I'm uh, I'm about five minutes from the house. Ooh, local. Uh, right in, in, in Converse Park. Uh, it's a park, you know, that I take my dog walking just about uh, five days a week. So uh, I might I might not even hook the pit up. I might just drag it over uh, <laughs> on foot. That's how close I am. Wow. So, oh. uh, and I've done well there. I think I'm 3-0 uh, and oh there. Uh, since they started having cook-offs there. So uh, I've got a bit of a home field advantage, I think. All right, so uh, we'll see how uh, you roll into or back into Texas after uh, trying your hand at FBA. It's uh, Clarence Joseph, Mom and Papa Joe's Barbecue, a team that we're following all season long here. Uh, so we wish you good luck, my friend, and uh, we'll recap it again next week. Yes, sir. I got your package read out. I left the house today and forgot it, but uh, it's in the mail tomorrow, baby. We'll yeah. make it happen. Just like that check, right? Yeah, yes, checks sir. in the mail. I, I, right. Thank you, Clarence. Absolutely.
All right, All man. All right, take care. We'll talk to you. Be safe, baby. You be cool. Clarence Joseph from Mama and Papa Joe's Barbecue. Uh-oh. Oh, I just screwed up my whole transition there. That's all right. Oh, jeez. Now look at that. Oh, Get me to reading something here before I blow the whole house up. Oh, my God. That's the benefit of sitting over there. I'm <clears throat> Wait, hold on. That's the benefit of sitting right over there. Because... <laughs> You know, the, the the best thing that nobody knows except for the very few people. Actually, I think Patrick Paquette is the only person that's been in the basement with me. Uh, there's a, a, a vast swath of computer screens that lay in front of me that, that Desmond is actually behind. So even though we're in the same room, I mean, we might as well be blocks and cities apart. You can't see. Me. I mean, that's not a bad thing, right? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang, if you're like me, you're trying to think of the ways to step up the barbecue and grilling game, and I say it each and every week, no better, no easier way than by adding a little Butcher's Barbecue to your arsenal. Head on over to ButcherBBQ.com and stock up on the injections, the pork, the beef, the prime injection, the bird booster, the open pit for the pork, all that good stuff. Uh, Dave's products tried and true, not only on the competition scene, not only on TV shows, but in restaurants and barbecue stands all over the place. Not just his own, but all over the place. People are using Butcher's Barbecue products more and more, and they are experiencing increases in flavor and moisture retention, in points scoring in competitions, and high fives from the neighbors if you're a backyard guy like me. Here's the thing. Desmond and I were just talking about how incredibly warm it's been over, like, Ever since this winter, I guess. Ever's right. Is that a, yeah, ever. 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 So I had, a, I fired up all of the cookers this past weekend. The Green Mountain Grill was on. The Grill Pellet Cooker was on. The Lang 36 wood burner was on. And uh, one of our friends brought over a whole pork loin. So I put it, I cut it in half, and then I injected it. Here's what, I got outside the box. I took the Honey Bird Booster, and I injected it into the pork and it was a winner i'm telling you as i am slicing it the moisture is just running i, I mean i it, it it came over the top of the pan that i had Absolutely and this is abs- this is after it had sat for like 15 minutes that it was this was competition quality pork slice Plus, of course, I have that awesome knife, uh, awesome knife from the the guy at uh, Cleveland Cuts that made made for me that big meat slicer. This combination was absolutely spectacular. The honey, the pork, of course, everybody knows that sweet and pork go together. Everybody likes to do that with the rubs and the sauce and all other stuff. This injection added a whole nother flavor profile to the whole end product. And when I gave it to my friends, they were ecstatic. Then we. It, 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 there was so much left over. It was like an 18-pound whole loin. We sliced it very thin, and they're going to use it for uh, Cuban sandwiches later. So here's what you want to do. You want to go over to Butcher Barbecue and order up all of the good stuff, the injections, the sauces, the rubs. You know you're not going to be let down. And you don't have to worry about breaking the bank if you order $10 or $400 worth of stuff. It's $8 to ship it all. That's it. Don't let shipping hold you up anymore. Get to ButcherBBQ.com and take advantage of the shipping savings. All right, uh, we're back to quickly wrap up the first hour right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. All right. Thanks again to Clarence Joseph for joining me last segment. Texas cook. You know what they cook in Texas, right? Everything big. Brisket. We should fly him up here. We should. To cook brisket for us. Absolutely. Have like a little private class. I'm sure he'd be doing that. I wonder what type of flavor profile he use. Uh, I, next time we're going to press him. We'll get the yeah. full inside scoop. You know, it, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. I, he should. I, my personal opinion, you know, you 
The food follows you, you know? Don't change flavor profiles change for regions. Pro- exactly. Use what's winning. You, hey, use what got you there. Right. I'm going to take the person to the dance that I took to the dance. I've, There's a I've, saying that goes well, along with that, I think. Well, it was more so, you know, don't, you know, dance with the girl that brought don't you. Don't dance in the, 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 don't dance with the fat girl. I think that's what it is, right? No. No. I, I, hell, I don't know. I usually left a dance early and got drunk anyway. So. <laughs> oh, Desmond. All right, uh, we're going to expedite on that note and refresh libations, and we'll get to reloading for the second hour. Don't forget, Sterling Ball from Big Papa Smokers will be joining us in the second hour. We'll talk about pork and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but first, uh, we'll just talk about some items that might be withstanding on the top of our head. Who knows? You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. I'm Greg. That's Desmond right there to my left. And we will see you back here in just a couple of minutes. Stick around. We'll be right back. This is Chad Hayden with Miss Miners Barbecue, 19th annual Jack Daniels World Barbecue Champion, and this is Barbecue Central. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate two feet before we nursed. Delicious, Lavernius. Shut your face. I'm shaking like a dog. Shit, peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Top men. All right. Just like that, we are into the second hour. You like that little intro, don't you, Desmond? You got to. Yeah, we were dancing together. You didn't know it, but we were... Da- oh, Matt Boer, Greg, you are embarrassing us white folks. Bullshit. <laughs> Desmond, tell him. Hey, Greg had a bit... How long ago was that? That was two what, years ago. Two years ago. It, was it Mother's Day? Yes. Really? He came no, over, you know what? He, he came it was over. Braden's, it was Braden's birthday. But, uh, but it was on Mother's Day. Yeah, Mar had got... Uh, 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 oh, first, uh, communion. first communion, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I, we both had huge parties in the backyard. Yes. And uh, my uncle decided, my drunk uncle decided it was a good idea to cross <laughs> the property line and uh, have a dance competition with Greg. Yes, the it- end result was Rimpy won, and my uncle lost. Yes, and I made sure that my uncle went home. Yeah, it wasn't close. <laughs> I dropped it like it was hot. <laughs> Whatever. Listening to collard greens. Nobody, nobody, ever, nobody wants to believe it. I mean, I get it. You look at me, you think I'm pretty mild mannered. I'm like the super band of dancing, but like Clark Kent. Yeah. But as soon as the beat comes on, get out. That's right. Hey, watch out, everybody! I'll dance <laughs> on your face. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as I had mentioned before, still to come on the show in about uh, 12, 13 minutes from now, Sterling Ball from Big Papa Smokers. Uh, we're going to go semi-in-depth on the team of the year pork process, but not too much. And uh, this kind of kicks off a month's worth of interviews where I will be talking with each individual category winner for their particular meat for a KCBS Team of the Year. So uh, Sterling is pork, and then we have uh, chicken, uh, then we have ribs, and then we have brisket as well. So it's going to be a, a fun three and a half weeks coming up. So if you have any questions or you know whatever, try and get them in, and we will uh, ask Sterling for you if possible. But otherwise, uh, you know we have a bunch of other stuff to cover, especially the guinea pig event, and uh, we'll probably be able to build a little bit on the conversation that we had with uh, Ray Lampy in regards to uh, what barbecue contests are like now, and uh, of course Sterling very opinionated when it comes to making 
competitors visible and available to the general public and Perhaps that's a whole other aspect. I don't know if there's a lot of events that are out there that are really public friendly. So there's probably going to have to be a. Well, how else would you get a sponsor if it's not public friendly? Um. Well, I, marketing is marketing. So I think where the you, you don't see a lot of events that are just standalone events. Usually, sure. a, a, a competition is inside of a car festival or. Uh, some type of a, a Cleveland food something or other, and there is a KCBS contest that's involved with that. But it's not just a KCBS contest rolls into downtown and right. and they because you know they're not vending, they don't do that. Uh, people aren't allowed to sample products. There's health code stuff that you have to take into consideration. So inherently, how it was built, it, it wasn't like a spectator type sport or a foot like it's not a rib burn off is basically what I'm saying. Right. But it, I mean, it's it's expanded. It's I mean, very popular. I, it's extremely popular. Yeah, way more popular than it used to be. So uh, Sterling will be able to weigh in on all of that. I want to make a special mention. I, uh, in, I I hesitate to point it out because it potentially would bother a number of people, depending on what kind of an ear they have, if you know what I mean. But I was driving to work last week, and I got a message from a guy named Haniel Trisna, and he said, hey, Listening to the show, did you notice the 100 megahertz hum that you had in your show? And, I was, and look, nobody listens to this show more keenly than me the day after. I'm listening for ums and ahs and transitions, stuff that you don't even care about or probably would even notice. And I said, no, I didn't notice it. Where is it? So he said, go to this time frame. You can hear it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the long and the short of it is this. He knows how to fix it. He said, get these kind of preamps, blah, 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 800 bucks a piece. Mm. Guess who's getting those? I don't have 800 bucks a piece for my mic and your mic, Desmond. Tell him to send it to you. Dan Haniel, Haniel. had two laying around because <laughs> this guy had a big time recording studio. Really? But is getting out of that, going into the live sound aspect. With uh, he's got like a twenty five thousand member church that he's running live sound for. You, that, that's huge. That's like a, a, a medium sized city, I think. Right for church. You're having a club scene in the it's church. Huge, right? So live sound. That's what he's getting into. He's got a pair of these things. He's donating to the show. I'm like, what? So send his guy a brisket. At at a minimum, I'm going to go into my special prize closet and send them back some thank you rub and sauce. Yeah. It's the least I can do. Absolutely. I mean, people want to know, what can I do for the show? Send me $1,600 worth of free equipment. <laughs> God, it. Do it. So uh, I want to mention Haniel, first and foremost, for being an outstanding uh, clinical ear when it comes to the audio side of things because I always want to make sure that my show sounds as professional as possible. And I can't do anything listener. about the host, of course, but the audio portion of it, he picked it up and uh, and then went out of his way to donate a huge portion of uh, what will hopefully enhance the show. I mean, you couldn't possibly think that it could get any better audibly, and it will. And perhaps by leaps and bounds. So thank you, Haniel. And uh, Desmond thanks you as well, of course. Absolutely. Thanks for, being, thanks, thanks for tuning in. That mic is going to sound even better the next time you sit in, which, you know, what, is that going to be like a year from now or whatever when you come back again? What are you talking about? I live right next door. I know. Well, this you, is the first you time know, you've been in for like nine <laughs> to ten months. Well, you know you have, you have such illustrious guests. I just, <laughs> you know. Yeah, illustrious the the, the the novice barbecue Pitmaster with his Weber next door sits in. Where's the sheriff? The, uh, <laughs> I did not shoot the sheriff. I can tell you, and I didn't shoot the deputy. Hey, I want to thank you once again for uh, having having the sheriff bring me the uh, the drill bit that I needed, even though it was not needed. Yeah, yeah. Afterwards. All right, so I, I do want to mention this as well. Um, Patrick Paquette is saying that. The watermark on the graphic that I have behind us has to go. I agree, but 
I get to test these out first to see if I really like them in live situations. And the good news is, I think I like it. So now, I will purchase it, and the Pond 5 watermark on the television screen will go away next time. So, just relax. Don't force me into making this an all-radio show again, please. Oh, don't do that. How about this, Desmond, for a bit of uh, Kansas City Barbecue Society breaking news? A Barbecue Central Show exclusive news update. Uh, Greg Rempe reporting live from the breaking news desk here at the Barbecue Central Radio Show in Cleveland, Ohio. The inaugural 2016 KCBS Team of the Year rules. Not just national, international Team of the Year. So if you live in somewhere that isn't the United States of America, you have the option of forming a competition team. And if you meet these criterion, potentially being the very first international team of the year. Do you want to know what those are? Please, by all means. For the inaugural 2016 year, two world regions will be eligible. So it is a little bit of a discriminatory. Uh, The uh, America's hat, better known as Canada, eligible. And the land that loves soccer, Europe. Those two places are eligible. To be eligible for Team of the Year points, the head cook of the team must be a member of KCBS in good standing at the time the team is taking part in the quality contest. Qualifying contest, I mean. The team's name must be registered with KCBS. A team's head cook's domicile determines his or her team's region of eligibility. A team will gather points from any sanctioned event, master KCBS contest that cooks anywhere in the world. The American Royal, but not excluding, uh, but excluding Jack Daniels World Invitation Championship. Oh, I got to stop this real quick. Uh, qualifying dates for 2016 Team of the Year: December 18th through December 11th. So, like a full year. To prevent a tie, the top five positions, the following procedures will be applied. Look at the sixth score, then look at the seventh score, so on and so forth. Because the top five are are going to be how you're originally determining the first team of the year international. U.S. teams and international head cooks living in the U.S. are not eligible, of course. The team must be sure there's not another team registered with KCBS with a duplicate name. That's tough. I mean, there's a lot of names. For each international region, the top 10 winner in each category and overall will receive recognition. Recognition. And finally, there are the rules. These are the rules for 2015. KCBS International expands. So will the number of international team of the year regions. So just to be clear, if you live in Canada or you live in Europe... That's pretty expansive, right? Europe? That, what is that? Like uh, England and France, I think, makes up Europe. I think that's right. So, you know, hey, I know if you are a listener to this show and you're outside of the United States and even Canada, I want to hear from you. I want to get you on. I want to get you karma for Europe. Let's go, Europe. KCBS Team of the Year International. Come on, man. Are you excited for that? Maybe. I don't know. No, no, you're not. (laughs) He is not excited for International Team of the Year. That's all right. We'll get you excited. Are you? It's the same season like everything else. But it seems like a longer process. Oh, you wait until next segment. You're going to be able to vent all your long process frustrations to a man that probably shares something similar. But first, I'm going to talk to you about the longest-running sponsor of the show, the Barbecue Guru. That's right, makers of automatic pit temperature control technology. Why are you going to buy from anybody else? A lot of companies out there mimicking. Stop it. These are the people that created it all. Why are you going to buy from anybody else? I don't know. Here's how they work. I don't want to get into the minutia, but imagine a product that allows you to set your pit temperature, and once set, keeps it running at that temperature all the way through the cook. Sound too good to be true? No, it's not. It's real life. You can take advantage of this technology today because maybe you're a busy working professional like me and Desmond, or perhaps you're constantly on the run with kids and doing errands, and you just don't have the time to set around and tend pit temperatures. We get it. The Guru allows you to throw on a pork butt or a brisket or a couple slabs of ribs or all of that. 
and you're off to do whatever it is you need to get done. And the Guru maintains that pit temperature you set it at. There's currently a number of different miles to choose from. One of my favorites, if you don't need a huge amount of tech, but you still want something to keep that pit at the assigned temperature you set it at, I say for $149, Party Q! It's a self-contained device. It runs on AA batteries. It can go from a kettle-style grill to a bullet-style grill to a ceramic-style grill. We affectionately refer to it as the hooker of automatic pit temperature control devices because it goes from one to the next to the next. And it's very adaptable, if you know what I mean. Now, maybe you're in the market for a cooker. Look no further than the Onyx Oven. The Onyx Oven has been winning on the competition circuit and in backyards for years across the country. Fully insulated, holds a ton of meat, accommodates the half and full pans for food service. Working seamlessly with any of the Barbecue Guru pit temperature control devices. So here's what you do. Head on over to their website, thebbqguru.com, and check out their products. If you have any questions about what to order, don't guess. Call them, 800-288-GURU. They will make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. 800-288-GURU. Or visit thebbqguru.com. The Barbecue Guru is a breakthrough in barbecue technology. All right, uh, Sterling Ball from Big Papa Smokers out of the break. You're listening and watching Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central radio and television network. Stick around. We'll be right back. Live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. It's the Barbecue Central Show. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Oh, that's right. I forgot I dumped my Skype when we were talking to uh, Clarence Joseph there. All right, we'll get Sterling on the line here. Uh, my next guest, proud sponsor of this show, proud to have him, and a competitor on the barbecue circuit, championship world champion, by the way. And. Currently, the reigning team of the year for KCBS when it comes to pork. We race over the hotline. And welcome back, friend of the show, Sterling Ball, Big Pop Smokers. Sterling, how are you, buddy? I'm fine. Hey, you're a couple minutes late. Did Lampy go long? I mean, can anybody shut that guy up? Uh Oh, Oh, my Lord. Hey, I love Ray Lampy. He gave us his spot at the American Royal. And the first year he gave it to us, we won. I kind of feel like he got up from a slot machine and we, we <laughs> sat down at it and hit the jackpot. That's the way to go, right? Yeah, so I want real empty spot everywhere I go. Absolutely. Uh, we're talking with Sterling Ball. BigPapaSmokers.com is his website. number of different things to talk to here tonight. By the way, uh, Sterling, let me uh, introduce you to my neighbor, Desmond Motley, who was the first in-studio guest as the uh, Barbecue Central Studios has just recently been renovated and finished. So uh, Sterling, Desmond, Desmond Sterling. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Uh, Desmond, this is the Team of the Year winner in pork, by the way. I may have a lot of questions. All right. So let's do that first, uh, Sterling. We have the pit master. Were you going were you, were you to ask about the extensive media I've been doing for it? <laughs> so here's the thing, right? I mean, if we talk about, well, you know, if we talk about team of the year overall, or if we talk about teams that win, that are category uh, team of the year, uh, brisket, pork, uh, beef, and, and so on. Where? How come there? How come KCBS isn't trotting you guys out and doing like uh, here are the the master class that we're going to be signing and, and taking you guys on tour with and putting you guys in front of television shows? You know, I, I don't know. It is kind of funny because you know it's, I think it's really hard to to win a category and yeah. Uh, but I look at Travis. I 
I'd love it. I mean, that big ginger would look great on Good Morning America, don't you think? <laughs> yes, but... I just it's, said it's, that for his benefit, or it, today's it, show. It, it seems like it's the best, that they want to keep it the best kept secret in the world of barbecue. Nobody's getting trotted out. Nobody's getting paraded around. I'm not saying they have to, you know, lavish you guys with limousines and private jets and first class seating and all this stuff, but it wouldn't be probably a bad idea to continue to raise awareness and raise that urgency to, to get people in and say, hey, I think I can do that too. Well, maybe they're listening. <laughs> I mean, I, I, one man can only do so much, Sterling, <laughs> on an internet radio show for crying out loud. Oh, my Lord. Uh, Thank you for El Nino, by the way, out here. Oh, the rain, I appreciate that. Sterling, I don't want to... I wanna, know that was you. I, I want to break news here. Tomorrow... Tomorrow, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio, on February 3rd, it's going to be 59 degrees. 59. Are you going to wear shorts? Hell yeah. Last year at this time and two years ago at this time, it was 59 below. 59 below. It was crazy cold. So... I, I, it's, it's really it's really nice out here in La Quinta, California. Yeah, well, it, I think it's nice every day out in La Quinta, California. Do you believe in climate change? Do you think that's a real thing? Sure, sure I do. Steph explains it to me. Oh, Steph he's the genius. intellectual. We talk every morning, he's and he always fills me in on stuff like climate change and stuff. <laughs> I can only imagine the, uh, the the conversations that go between the West Coast offense guys. So. Uh, let's talk a little. Can <laughs> we talk? Wait, sometimes they're pretty funny. I can only imagine. Uh, can we talk a little pork just briefly? Yes. All right. Um, team of the year in pork. You've cooked pork very well over the last handful of years, regardless. Uh, but winning team of the year, I know that was kind of like a, a goal for you. So, uh, you know, as you look back and having done, you know, 20 plus competitions, not, you know, 35 and 40 plus competitions, but, you know, 20 plus. Uh, I have to imagine you're pretty happy with that finish. And close. Oh by yeah, that. but I was actually actually kind of scared um, yep. coming down to it because you know uh, there are a lot of teams. I mean, uh, funny story. I'm in Oklahoma and Donnie Teal has got first place. You know, Buffalo's Barbecue, and I'm in second, kind of on his heels. And um, I'm building my pork box, and this this clown starts yelling at me. Seriously, a clown oh. dressed like a sheriff. Sterling Ball, you're under arrest. And I'm going what? I'm trying to build my box. Get out of here. Nope. And, and the guy will not leave me alone. And I finished my box, and he said, well, Cindy Teal put me up to that, and uh, <laughs> which is really funny. I thought it was hysterical because I just love them. And uh, I got a little lucky and got a, a 180, and that put me in the first. But uh, there were a lot of teams coming down, including Donnie. But smoke me silly, really. I mean, it came down to the last day of the season. And I think it came down to the last day of the season for – Darren with brisket too. Um, there are the little races within the races, and you know I can only cook twenty five times. I feel very, very fortunate, and I feel like it's a pretty good accomplishment to win Team of the Year with twenty five cooks. Sterling Ball joining us from Big Papa Smokers twenty fifteen Team of the Year KCBS in pork. So, uh, it, it, you want to know what rub I used? <laughs> Do, do you are you, are you willing to are you willing to give that information up, Sterling? Of course. First of all, I got to thank Compart, my sponsors. Um, they've had me on a media tour too. Actually, they haven't. I might make their Facebook. Um, you might now. But anyway, so I cook. Well, yeah, I cook Compart pork, and I um, I season first with. Um, actually, I blend. About 60, 40 sweet money to 40%, um, simply marvelous pecan. And that's on all sides but the top side. The top side, I hit it with a layer of Big Papa Smokers Hallelujah very lightly, and then that same 60, 40 blend. And I cook it on the old Hickory Ace BP at 275. At about two hours and 15 minutes, I go to foil and I do some secret things there. But I, I think that. The secret to our pork over the last few years is really what we do when it comes out of the foil, and that's the stuff that I'm not going to tell you about. But it, 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 there's an amazing how much how much you can affect your cook coming out of the foil. You mentioned Compart Pork. Um, yes. Did, did they also support you on ribs? 
Yes. Uh huh. Did uh, and forgive me for asking, but did they, did Compart also uh, have the team of the year in ribs? No. No. no, I don't think they did. All right, so uh, but uh, I, I don't know. You know, that's Tim Shear, and I don't really want. I may have a pretty good idea what he uses, but I don't think he'd like it if I <laughs> went on the radio and talked about what he used. He's part of the West Coast offense too. Of course. Um, so, in regards to the pork, you know, I think we we talk extensively. We have for maybe two or three years on this show uh, with different pitmasters on brisket and wagyu brisket and is that the expense that people need to make and is can you get away with prime or maybe even something a little bit less uh, and i know you're a big wagyu guy but if we can transition that into the pork thing do you see a push towards you know the the compart pork or the the heritage breed porks uh, whether it be in the ribs or the the pork shoulder side or is that still not a a necessary evil look i i, I think everybody tries to do whatever they can to get whatever advantage they can. And, you know, for me, it was calm part poor. And, um, you know, they're, they're different. They're, they're, you know, there's a learning curve with them, uh, because, uh, how you trim them and, uh, what the feel is like when you pull them because they're, they're all different. But I still think uh, the pork's a couple years behind brisket. I still think there's quite a few, uh, majors one with commodity pork too. So how I mean, it, tournament it, contest it, it, a lot of walks a lot of people will get uh, IBP pork like I, that's what I get at uh, at BJ's or you know whatever the commodity brand of pork so when and that's what a lot of people are familiar with or at least that's what a lot of even teams started off with or, or still kind of might be using a little bit in the competition scene so if you're used to that can you explain how the the difference is with a with a comp part shoulder then well the money muscle the way they trim is, is shorter. Okay, so it's like some of the commodity ones you can get, you know, nine or ten slices out of it. With with the compart, you really, I mean, you're lucky if you can get six slices out of a butt. Um, so you really have to be very careful in trying to trim as as uniform as possible, and um, you know, because you're really building your box with maybe one more butt than you would uh, with a commodity butt. Are you turning in uh, money muscle and like pulled or chunked, or are you just turning in money muscle? I'm pulling. Well, <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, I'm turning in money muscle and money muscle chunk. So just just money muscle. I mean, in various yeah. forms. Yeah, my worst money muscle becomes chunk. Do, do Do you see that most teams or or the majority of teams are just cooking for money muscle, and that's what they're turning in? I, you know, I don't know. I know what the elite guys are doing and the West Coast guys, and I think I think most people are doing some form of uh, you know money muscle. I think you're going to see a little bit more pulled come back and a little more uh, chopped. And I think the other thing is when you get these contests like in the FBA where there's no garnish, I don't think you can really uh, get away with just money muscle. I'd actually like to see you have to turn in more. Well, I mean, to me, it seems, you know, there's a waste factor. Well, I mean, I guess I can't say it's a waste factor. But if you if you take a, an eight or a nine pound butt and you're just cooking for the end portion, which is the money muscle, because that's what you want to turn in. Uh, I mean, why why wouldn't KCBS look to, to make a rule where, you know, or, or, or some manufacturer come out selling just money muscle? Well, I don't know. I don't you know what? I think there's a lot of guys who do uh, different cuts and different pulls. My, my feeling was very clear that if you turn in three or four different kinds of meat, they're supposed to judge each kind of meat in that box. Yep. And so I'd say, well, I might as well turn in the best meat. And, you know, it's kind of a little sleight of hand, actually, but real hard for them to give my chunk significantly worse than my money muscle because it's the same thing. Sterling Ball joining us here on the show, pitmaster of Big Papa Smokers. Um, let me ask you a question, Sterling. I saw on the KCBS website that they they have decided, or the board, or the rules, or the competition committee, or whoever decides that they're going to allow kale as a garnish. And let me ask. Here's the question: yeah. Isn't that lame to allow kale? I mean, why not either mandate 
garnish. Now, or, hold on, hold wait, on, no, hold on, no, hold on. wait. No, no, wait. My show, no, my show. No, let me. me. You keep asking me these leading questions. No, I'm Get telling you. Something. Why not Ask mandate? Me what I think of kale as a garnish. Who gives a rat's ass what anybody thinks about kale? I mean, why let it? Why not? Why not make the bigger decision and say, okay, teams. Forget garnish altogether and do it like the FBA does. Or say, hey. Or, or, the, king, or the king of the smokers does that too. Yes. Or say, hey, you have to use garnish. Don't leave it as optional. Aside from Travis Clark, who said that he went ahead on garnish boxes, I don't know a lot of teams in the KCBS, kale or not, that aren't going to garnish a box. So why not just shit or get off the pot? Okay, well, you want to know why they did that? Because parsley's really a bitch. I mean, getting good parsley and getting it to last, and people were, um, you know, wanting an option. But to me, there is an option already there in green leaf lettuce. And lots of team of the years have put together green leaf boxes, uh, green leaf lettuce. Yeah. I, I, I think it's kind of silly they don't like red leaf lettuce, but hey, that's the rules, and you, you cook. But um, I don't imagine that I'm going to use kale is a garnish you know we still use par- parsley we get pretty good parsley out here um but but I mean, you course, see my easy, question easy to say, ask me how many boxes i've made with parsley how many zero you made zero boxes with parsley yeah they uh at big papa smokers they make them and then we flip them diva q taught us it <laughs> um you see my point though right Oh, yeah, well, listen, let you, me tell you what. Everybody could do a lot of things a lot of different ways. You know, what's really important to me right now with KCBS, yeah, I agree they could promote their champions better. Hopefully they will. And it's really not necessarily for category as much as overall. I mean, it's such a grueling, grinding marathon. And then when it's over, it's like it's it's over. Yeah. You know? There's no, there's no victory lap. So I do believe that the thing I really am hoping is I, you know, we got the guinea pig coming up, which I hope we have time to talk about. I'm, I'm hoping that the board um, allow, allows the guinea pig to get Jack Bung's royal draws and points because it's not an easier contest. It's a harder contest. Do you think that because there is really no trot around or, you know, and I'm not saying the team's – try to win team of the year. Well, I'm going to say, obviously, teams that are trying to win either a category of team of the year or team of the year aren't looking to, to get trotted around. But do you think that, uh, like, what's the motivating factor then to to be a, a team of the year? I mean, if you know you're not going to get trotted around and you know you're not going to get a million dollars for winning it, is it just to say, I did it? Yeah, but you have to understand, you know, it's seven or 8,000 teams and there's, I think, 32 cooked more than – more than uh, 25. So it's really about 10 teams think about it. And categories, you fall into a category. You start hitting, or at least I'm speaking for myself. Yeah. You fall into a category, you start hitting, and you start watching the leaderboard. Okay? But but I didn't start out this year thinking, hey, I think I'm going to win pork this year. I, I got on a pretty good run, and you know it's been my strongest meat for several years, but you know I never thought I could cook enough to win it. But I think the cat, um, there's certain teams that, that definitely, you know, Travis this year called it. I mean, it's like calling a home run ball. There were other teams that called it to me that, you know, finished 25th and 30th. So it, it's, it's really, really hard. That's all I can say. I mean, the teams that win team of the year really do it at a great financial expense, a great time expense. And I think a lot of stress it's, now, I think that it would be nice if there were more rewards for it. But you know what? There's still, you know, I got a pretty good idea who's going for it this year. I could make my prediction on who I think is going to be going down to the last week next year. Well, this is uh, this is, this happens to be a day where prognostication is sought after. I mean, Puxatani Sterling Ball joining us here on the show. Go ahead and give us your prediction. I did get a call from Murray today, so that was good. I bet. Um, <laughs> he needed a doctor. Uh, I think Smoke Me Silly is 
probably got the ability and the the, the, the schedule and the, the desire. I would look for Smokey Silly to, to be there at the end next year, one of the teams. All right, so we'll uh, we'll see how that tracks out here over the next 10 months or so. Uh, Sterling, let me ask you another quick question uh, before we get into the break. Then we'll uh, use the next segment to talk about guinea pig, of course. Last time we talked, uh, we, we briefly touched on the length of Team of the Year for KCBS right now. And if if you think there is a realistic opportunity to shorten the season up a little bit, however that would seem to make sense to you, what's your take on that? Well, uh, there was a task force on it, and I wrote a very long, detailed um, uh, you know, position, my opinion, and um, but I also said I couldn't really participate in the, the task force, but didn't want to just say no to it. So, I mean, I spent a lot of time writing it, but man, the guitar business has been crazy for me. And, and I did eight new guitars this year. And, and so I just didn't have the time, but unfortunately they met and they, what they brought back to the banquet was lowering, trying to lower the bonus points to 25, which I think is really, really wrong. But again, I could have stayed on the committee and fought. So I didn't, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I think that you got too many people that, that, that have too many different opinions and some of the opinions, the people don't cook. So I think it makes it tough. Sterling ball joining us here on the show. Sterling, can I hold you over for a segment and then we'll, uh, we'll get into some Guinea pig. Oh, uh, really? Of course. All right. Uh, Sterling ball joining us here on the show. Desmond also in studio. Very, very quiet. in the stuff. Look at you, soaking it up like a sponge. I'm going to talk to you quickly about Cook Shack, the Fast Eddies by Cook Shack Pellet Grill, a smoker and a grill all in one. It's 100% stainless steel wood-burning pellet-fired cooker that uses direct and indirect heat up to 800 degrees. It is the only pellet grill on the market that uses char broiler technology. It features electronically controlled temperature to eliminate large heat fluctuations that dry and shrink meat. A pellet grill can bake, grill, roast, sear, and smoke. Cook Shack has two models of pellet grills to choose from. The PG-1000 features a fully insulated double-walled rolled hood for superior heat retention, fuel savings, and maximum cooking performance. The PG-500 features a two-way swing lid pellet drop and utensil holder. The 500 to 1000 have many great features to include 784 square inches of cooking space, easy side loading pellet hopper, fully automated wood pellet feed system, stainless steel cooking grade on the direct side for killer looking sear marks, nickel plated grills on the indirect top racks, You've got a drip bucket, a pellet ash drawer, 100% stainless steel construction, a warming drawer, 40 pounds of cook shack hickory pellets, and our world-famous 30-day money-back guarantee. What does that mean? It means you can cook on it for 28 or 29 days. If you don't like it, for whatever reason, you can get your money back, send it back in and get a replacement, things of this nature. It's a versatile pellet cooker that adds full flavor to your recipes, including fajitas, ribs, chicken, desserts, large cuts of meat. It can even do cold smoking. Grilling with wood pellets penetrates the food with an intense smoky flavor, giving you that wood smoke flavor that you are yearning for in your foods. Here's what you do. Check them out on their YouTube channel or their cooking guide on the website, cookshack.com, or give them a shout on the phone, 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698. Good folks over at Cook Shack and let them know the Barbecue Central Show sent you over. All right, we're back with Sterling Ball in five seconds. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, welcome back. Desmond Motley sitting in live in studio tonight. And Sterling Ball joining us. By the way, he's out of the lot for the show tonight. I know, man. The guy, he won't shut up. Come on. (laughs) Sterling, he's like a sponge. I need to get I need to get a gauge. A temp gauge. My Weber. Like a no you don't. Yeah, I do. I'll give you one. Well, right. I, pre- I appreciate the Sterling the gesture. uh bigpopasmokers.com is the website, by the way, if you want to check it out while we're talking. Uh one of the other things that you're into aside from 
the competition barbecue competing is putting on competitions. Of course, King of the Smoker is uh, well revered as being the event to hopefully get an invitation to. The other one, uh, which is uh, coming sooner than later, is the Guinea Pig. So I guess, you know, for Desmond's uh, education and for those maybe tuning in the first time or uh, that aren't as familiar, a little bit about the, that particular event and why you decided to get it rolling. Well, you know, it, it, what's really funny is when I first, this is the third year of the first year, a lot of people gave me a lot of crap about it. And now, as competition barbecue has gotten more expensive and the amount of gear you had to have and all that, the idea of a $450 contest, where, which is, means it's cost-controlled, um, where the meat's provided for you, um, and an expended payout, and a kid's queue where the kids keep the Weber and a dessert, and we're having a, a couple things. We're having a uh, Snake River Farm weenie roast with 500 hot dogs. We're going to have the largest dessert potluck, but I'm going to let a cat out of a bag right now. All right. The meat's all provided. Um, first thing is I'd like to really well give a warm welcome to Smithfield that's uh, signed on to sponsor the guinea pig. So nice. we'll be cooking Smith, Smithfield ribs and ribs and pork. Yep. Uh, the the always tender, and then returning is our beef supplier sponsor, which is the meat maven and Ella and and Shane at uh, I don't call Shane the meat maven at Snake River Farms. And uh, I think people already figured out our little secret. Um, everybody's getting a, a Snake River Farms wagyu brisket wow. in their meat box. So. At 450 bucks this year, you've got a Wagyu brisket, you've got Smithfield pork, and um, uh, some commodity chicken. And uh, over the last two years, um, 21% of the teams either break even or make a profit, okay? 60% of the teams after two years, okay? Get a call, get a ribbon, and get a check, okay? So it really makes it, uh, you know, where a couple buddies can get together and, and cook and it's two twenty five each and if you know somebody won ribs last year and that's all they did and the contest cost them I think eighty dollars each. Um the other misconception about the guinea pig is that it's a beginner's contest. I was just gonna ask you about it's that. not Yeah well I I like that was feeling that. Um we have judges that only cook one contest a year. We have a couple teams that cook one contest a year the guinea pig, but we have four elite teams cooking it. Uh, we have Girls Gone Wild Iowa, the Royal Champion. We have Pigskin. We have uh, Steph Franklin, the uh, West Coast Offense, and Simply Marvelous. We have Matt and Moe and James of Left Coast. Um, we have, um, let me see, we've got a, we got uh, the reigning California Team of the Year, Knock Your Socks Off, Lady AQ. Um, from Georgia, Randall Bowman coming out. Uh, so, I mean, it's a, a shake and bake. The the rib champion is is cooking it, uh, getting basted. The, the reigning chicken champ is cooking it. So, I mean, it's a really great mix of people, and it's a ton of fun. Do you think that uh, you know we we we've always talked about expense and increasing in costs, and and our pitmasters kind of shooting themselves in the foot for for trying to you know, get all of the specialized meats in there and, and cookers and accoutrements and all this other stuff. You have a contest like guinea pig that's a, a cost-controlled event, as you're saying. And I've heard from a number of different people, in, in whether it be email or off-air phone conversations, saying they would like to see something like a guinea pig gain steam and start to kind of spread out like a, a Sam's Club. So you have, you know, a number of uh, uh, local qualifying events that might build into a secondary tier that might end up, you know, over in La Quinta as well uh, for like a, a well, grand Well, no, I can tell you, I can tell you, you know, Jeff Staney uh, that owns Kansas City Barbecue Store, my big competitor, You're he actually accepted my trophies and money at, um, at the, uh, banquet, but we're actually really good friends. I get, get along well with Mark and, um, Richard at barbecue superstore. I mean, it, we're all just selling barbecue stuff, but Jeff, Jeff was slaughterhouse five. And I like to tease him that, um, he won the Royal in the pre metallurgy era. They were still smoking in barrels, uh, wooden barrels. Um, it's been so long, but he comes out of retirement and cooks the guinea pig. 
and he's cooking again. In fact, he's coming to my practice cook tomorrow. I got to show him some tips, but he's going to be putting on a guinea pig in Kansas City. Um, I know that uh, Tim uh, Shake and Bake is working on one in St. Louis. I know uh, Tuffy Stone, believe it or not, Tuffy is really behind this concept, and he's going to be doing one in Richmond, and we'd like to get one in the South, but we're looking at five or six this year. And so um, there's the demand. I mean, we get emails uh, all day long for teams saying, please bring it to our area. So in the kind of people that are doing them, when you talk about, you know, Tim Shear and uh, Jeff Staney and Duffy Stone, um, but those are those are big names in barbecue. They really believe in the concept. Do you think that at some point it's going to morph into its own, you know, kind of a series, a standalone series? Well, I, I, I hope so. I think that you know one of the things I got attacked about the first year was, what are you trying to do? Change change things? I'm not. I'm offering an option that didn't exist before. If people don't want to cook it, fine. There's there's a bunch of other contests, but you know, my last contest out here in California was November, Indio, and I don't get to cook again until March. So there's not quite as many opportunities there were. And I think the guinea pig, I think people, especially the beginning of the year out here, I think it's 450 bucks. It's a great hang, knock the rust off and uh, see what happens. I mean, Luton Booty's coming back. They won last year. You know the other Sterling. So I mean, it's, I think it's a blast. I, I have a lot of fun at it, and I think that there could be quite a few of them around the country. So even if it's not the guinea pig, do you think that there might be a a move afoot here over the next couple of years that that might incorporate and and whether it's something that somebody's trying to start their own series or maybe it's just one off? But do you see more of a, a move to cost controlled type of events versus uh, the way they're kind of sitting now? Yeah, there's the Iron Man back in uh, Pennsylvania. I think you're going to see a lot more of those. The thing is, it, it's it's getting the connections with the meat suppliers. It, it's getting to have it in the weather time because we don't provide power and we actually restrict when you can have your generator on. So, I mean, there's certain place, certain times of the year where I guess, because the generator is at least $5,000. So it's difficult. Now the one out here is called the Guinea pig because our California cooks for the Guinea pig. It, It will have a different name when it goes nationally and hopefully a national sponsor that, you know, I'm talking to a few, I mean, there's interest on the sponsor level. So, um, as a way of connecting and bringing a unique product to barbecue and, in entangling their brand with something very happening. Sterling ball joining us here on the show. Big Papa smokers.com is the uh, website. If you want to check out uh, what he has to offer. Speaking of uh, the website, Sterling and, Running that back over to the rubs real quick. Um, I, I know you had some, you know, releasing of, of new rubs here uh, not so long ago. So, uh, you know, how have you found uh, Cash Cow to be doing, and you know, some of these other rubs? Well, I think Cash Cow is the best thing that I've ever done, and um, I, I mean, it keeps getting first place. I mean, that conjunction with you know the little secrets peppered cow double secret and cash cow and then our new injection which is called cattle prod which comes out february 20th but you can see a lot of a lot of the uh, if you watch a lot of the elite teams and west coast teams and you know i would never disclose anything you know anybody like darren used last weekend i would never suggest that it could have been that nothing um no maybe (laughs) maybe I mean, it's not it's not a bad uh, it's not a bad promo if it was considering he won it. Well, I got you know, but but who knows? I mean, there were three there was the, there were I think four one eighties at the Royal at the Open and three of them were Cash Cow Cattle Prod. I got a uh, um, perfect perfect the next week at Sam's. Um, there, it, you know, lots of guys lots of guys are hitting with it, and I know we can't keep it on the shelf, so people seem to be liking. But the great thing about Cash Cow is great great at home um i know one of our teams takes ramen to work and uses cash cow as the uh, bouillon so i mean and i know darren makes uh, bloody marys with it so it's got some interesting uses do, do you think that darren worth is like the best team going right now 
Well, uh, um, you know what? Here's the thing. Obviously, I'm biased, but I think Darren Ward it always has to be considered the favorite. Darren and Sherry, and Sherry's a big part of that team. Um, but I also think, and I've said this before, I think not only are they just absolute incredible cooks, um, they're, gr- they're the great ambassadors of barbecue. Um, you know, they, they get, they go through the season making everybody around them feel good. And, and I, I, you know, I think you probably hear that a lot, that, uh, I think they're wonderful people for barbecue and, you know, they had a big run for a while and they, they sort of slipped for a while. I mean, 30 or 40 and they came back. I mean, their second run has been just amazing. I mean, he hasn't cooked since King of the Smokers. Walk goes down to Sonny's, his first FBA, and comes back with a twenty-five thousand dollar check. I mean, I think he's really good. I'm very, very honored and happy to have him part of our group. Absolutely, Sterling Ball joining us here. He's the pitmaster of Big Papa Smokers. The website, BigPapaSmokers.com. Sterling, always appreciate the time, man. Thanks for coming on. Hey, I got some new shirts for you. I'm ready. I'm extra large because, you know, I'm working out. I know you are, and uh, I know your kids need them, but they got nice Simply Marvelous on them and nice big yeah. I think you'll like them. All right. I'll be looking forward. Thank you, Greg. All right. We'll talk to you. There he is, Sterling Ball. That's, that's the team of the year in pork right there, Desmond. Were you surprised at his uh, methods that he laid out in kind of a, a quick fashion? Be the question. Yeah, that's a question. I said, repeat the question. Oh, I said, what? What are you drinking over there? It was a little. Never mind. I said, are you surprised at his uh, at his process that he laid out rather quickly for us? Uh, like, do you is that something that you would do in your pork? Probably. Um, it it works for him, and you know what? Uh, with that type of um, process that he's going through and the process that he's using, you know it. it he, he's, you know, part of the team of the year, and, you know, so it must taste good, you know. And it's more so, like you said, it's more so of, you know, uh, the foiling process more than anything. So I think it's some some nuances and some things that I can take from that going forward. So when we have the, uh, the pork butt throwdown this summer, you're feeling pretty good? Yeah. You're not going to, like, break into my house and steal my Chops Power Injector? Uh, no, I'm actually. I was. Good. I was actually. I was actually a lot looking at how much they cost. Uh, yeah, you get free for me. <laughs> hey, after I'm done injecting mine, I'll I'll let you use mine, or get your own and be happy that you did. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be. Uh, or I'll give you my single needle, and That's after what? I'm on my fifteenth pork butt injecting and you're almost done with your first one you'll realize <laughs> that it was the best hundred bucks you ever spent no doubt about it. yeah all right uh we're gonna go ahead and uh, get ready to wrap up let me tell you desmond you ever heard of amazon.com I, that, where do you think i was shopping at i know here's what you need to do before you just jump over to amazon.com hit up my website first and then at the top there's a thing that says amazon.com When it lights up white, hit it. And then you'll link over to Amazon. Little referral program for the website. So it doesn't adjust your purchase price, whoever you are searching at Amazon. However, the show gets a very small percentage. And we reinvest that back into this show, this production. Removing watermarks that say Pond 5 on the (laughs) green screen stuff. Son of a bitch. (laughs) Uh, this is what we do. We try and make the show better. So, anyway, uh, the show staff would appreciate you going to the BBQ Central Show, uh, the, the BBQ Central Show.com <laughs> and then clicking on Amazon.com and then doing your shopping. And uh, what can I tell you? You want to know ways to support the show? Uh, A, donate $1,600 worth of audio equipment immediately. <laughs> Do that. If you can't do that, Thanks, go to Amazon.com through the website, and uh, we'll take a small percentage of your shop. You still get to pay whatever you pay. It doesn't increase the price. I know people are very concerned about that. <laughs> All right, uh, we're back to wrap up the show right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back.
Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, we're back. Desmond Motley is in the house tonight. There he is, right there. Uh, I failed to mention this in the top of the second hour because I forget exactly what we were talking about. But I didn't do the weekly barbecue roundup. So, in the KCBS, there were two events that took place this past weekend, January 29th and 30th. Uh, one that we did talk about with Ray Lampy, Lakeland Pig Festival in Lakeland, Florida. Winning that one, Sweet Racks and Smoking Butts, 687 took it. And then the Yaks Sydney Barbecue Festival in Sydney, Australia, international. Hey, guess what, Australia? You're not in for international team of the year this year. Sorry, sucks to be you. You continue to be England's jail place of sending criminals. Thank you very much. Did you know? Did you know that? No. Did you know that Australia was originally founded as a uh, a bastion of a place where – the English ne'er do wells were sent. It's like that. The, the continent was used as jail. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. You were bad in England. Get on the ship, and we'll cart you right on over to Australia, and you can live out your days there. How about that? That's why they kind of almost talk, kind of like a little bit. Hmm? Not so much, but whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so sorry for Sydney not being eligible for 2016 Team of the Year, but try harder. Grand Champs at the Yaks Sydney Barbecue Festival was badass barbecue with a 653.6. So if you're paying attention to scores, Lakeland Pig Festival's Grand Champ was roughly 34 points higher than the Sydney Australia's Grand Champion. Uh, It's merely a point of uh, score different. It sounds like it is going to storm like crazy here all of a sudden. Is it going to tornado? Get on the weather app. I do not like tornadoes. Luckily, we're uh, right here in the basement, though, so we're safe. Desmond might be spending the night there. Then in Texas, Sonny's Showdown. Of course, we talked about that with Clarence Joseph. The RGC, or second place, was Killer V's, as in Victor, from uh, Texas. Hector Villanueva is the pitmaster there. CJ and his helper, Carlo Casanova, KJ Cooker, came in 16th overall. Five of the seven te- Texas teams got top 10 calls. So Texas representing very well. The International Barbecue Cookers Association had two cookoffs this past weekend. One was reported in the B County Junior Livestock and Homemaker Barbecue in Beeville, Texas. 61 teams taking place in that. Winning it was the Worms, Jose Castillo, Pitmasters, that team, and the Texas Gulf Coast Barbecue Association had one cookoff. However, they did not report. Get that big stuff out of here. So there's a winner out there somewhere in Texas, y'all but you're not going to get your name spoken on this show because nobody talked to Doug about it. Lone Star Barbecue Society had exactly zero competitions this past week. Get that big stuff out of here. Desmond, did you know that there was a state called Texas that has no less than three different sanctioning bodies within the state? No. Now you know. Isn't that a little much? I mean, I know Texas is big Texas and self-sufficient and all this stuff. But do you need three sanctioning bodies? Not necessarily. California only has a couple, maybe one, KCBS. Well, no, the international IBCA stretches from Texas goes over there, too. Like in the southern, in the panhandle, San Diego part area. Do you want to cook? Do we want to do we want to make a commitment on this show in the last 20 seconds that we're going to do a cook-off? Absolutely. I'm all about that. What? Absolutely. No. We didn't talk about this before. Hey, we're spontaneous, Greg. That's what we do. We're spontaneous. What's our team name? Bryn Mizzles. I don't know. Shit, let's think of something. Bryn Mizzles? Who knows? That's the worst name I've ever heard. Get that big stuff out of here. Bryn Mizzles? What does that even mean? I have no idea. I wanted to incorporate our street, but I, I didn't know how to incorporate the two of us. <laughs> All right, well, <clears throat> next time 
will put a little salt thought into the team. Now, here's the uh, here's the condition. I'm listening. We have to like the team name. If the team name bears out, we put it up for vote. And if it bears out, then we shoot for bear. Fair enough? It's fine by me. All right. So we may or may not be competing at some point in the next one to ten years. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right. We're going to wrap it up all the way back in the first hour. Uh, the first Tuesday of the month the guest, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, joined us. Then Clarence Joseph. From Mama and Papa Joe's Barbecue, recap Sonny's invitation in Sanford, Florida. Took 16th overall and is going back, as he should, to his Texas-based flavor profile roots after three uh, lackluster performances in his estimation. And then we talked with Sterling Ball for two segments in the 10 o'clock hour. Desmond Motley sat here through the whole show. Thank you very much, sir. We will do it again as well, I mean, I'm going to be here every Tuesday, so whenever you want to come, you just let me know. I got to make sure I don't uh, run into any other guests. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'll make sure that I <laughs> I uh, allot guests accordingly. All right? Absolutely. I appreciate that. You got it. Uh, until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, two things. September 11th, 2001, I will never forget. And I am your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.